Welcome to today's Leadership in Action Lunch and Learn webinar. Today we are teaming up with our national philanthropic partners, Hobie, to discuss how to plan a service project. Participating today will give you eight Leadership in Action points, so thank you for being here. We will be asking some open-ended questions during this webinar that you can type the answer in the GoToWebinar chat box on your screen. That is where you can also ask any questions. There will also be a poll in this webinar. During that time, you can pick one of the answers by clicking it on your screen. We have two panelists joining us today. First from Hobie is Chief National Programs Officer, Vicki theron Ray. Vicki oversees the program department staff of 10 who supervise 58 U.S. affiliates and 70 program sites across all 50 states, plus international programs and a network of over 4,000 volunteers serving approximately 10,000 students. Next, we have Director of Alumni Relations and Programming for Phi Sigma Pi, Sarah Smith. Sarah is an alumna of the Epsilon Alpha chapter at Kutztown University of Pennsylvania. She manages the fraternity's alumni engagement, including the National Alumni Association and alumni chapters. She also assists with national event programming and serves as the Hobie Partnership Lead for Phi Sigma Pi. Sarah is a Hobie alum, and this marks her 10th year as a Hobie volunteer. Currently, Sarah serves on the Board of Trustees as Clue Director for Central PA Hobie. Thank you, Vicki and Sarah, for joining us today. Well, it is a pleasure to be here with everybody, um, and I'm very excited uh, for this uh, Lunch and Learn webinar because it's one of my favorite topics. So uh, just to bring everybody up to speed, we're going to talk a little bit about Hobie and give you a little bit of a background, um, just in case you're still learning about um, our partnership with Phi Sigma Pi. Hobie was founded in 1958. And our mission is to inspire and develop our global community of youth and volunteers to a life dedicated to leadership, service, and innovation. Hobie inspires young people to make a difference and become catalysts for positive change in their home, school, workplace, and community. As America's foremost youth leadership organization, Hobie has a long and impressive history of successfully motivating youth and volunteers to outstanding leadership. Hobie programs provide youth selected by their schools to participate in unique leadership training, service learning, and motivation building act experiences. Hobie also provides adults with opportunities to make a significant impact on the lives of students by volunteering. We have over 4,000 committed uh, volunteers each year who plan and execute, execute the programs, and they serve both the local Hobie affiliate level and on Hobie's National Board of Trustees. It's due to the selfless efforts of volunteers and the contributions of generous donors that um, <clears throat> approximately 10,000 students participate in Hobie programs annually. So volunteers donate their time, their talents, and their labor by planning, coordinating, facilitating, and serving as mentors to tomorrow's young leaders. Each program strives to follow the Ho Hobie motto of teaching students how to think, not what to think. And today, there are over 425,000 proud alumni that make Hobie stronger than ever. So Hobie alumni uh, are leaders in their schools and communities throughout the United States and the world, um, making a difference for others through service. So we'd like to start today's session with a poll question. Um, specifically on what you find challenging about doing service projects at your chapter, because we want to address those challenges today. So go ahead and uh, take the poll on your computer, and we'll get the results here in a minute. And um, you can select all that apply, okay? So if they all apply to you, select them all. If there's two, select two. If there's only one, select one. We'll take a minute so that everybody can do that. Okay, we've got the results already. Thank you so much. The beauties of technology. Um, so our results. What do you find challenging about doing service projects? 68% getting chapter members involved to do the project. There was a tie at 44% between figuring out the logistics of how to do the project and getting a team to plan and organize the project followed by 28% with finding an organization or population that needs our help, 
and 8% for finding an issue or a social cause to address. So that's great because finding the issue or social cause is the place to start. So uh, only 8% have that as an issue. But we're going to be uh, covering all of these challenges today, so not to worry. <clears throat> So Hobie's mission is to inspire and develop our global community of youth and volunteers to a life dedicated to leadership, service, and innovation. And we put a high value on service because it allows us to improve the communities we are part of and also functions as a mechanism for continually improving our leadership skills. Willing and able volunteers are usually welcomed by organizations, so it's a really great way to practice your leadership skills. As Spice and Mapai members, you have the motivation, the vision, and the capacity to make a positive difference. And the leadership for service philosophy is important because to lead is really to serve humanity in all aspects of life. And leaders can take action in many ways, like social entrepreneurship, active citizenship, community service, and innovation and citizenship. So service is an effective way to demonstrate leadership and hone your skills, as we already discussed. And Hobie really values service and challenges every student and volunteer that we engage with um, to engage in Hobie's active leadership cycle, which you're going to learn about today. So a key component of leadership development is action, um, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So leadership for service requires taking action to serve others in order to develop your leadership skills. Um, author John Maxwell said, successful leaders have the courage to take action while others hesitate. And you can have the best ideas in the world, but if you never do anything with them and they never come to fruition, then nothing's going to happen and you're not growing. So service projects give you the opportunity to put your ideas into action. We take action based on our understanding of ourselves, our communities, and the resources that are available. The actions we take to make a positive impact on the world around us and understanding all aspects will help us be more effective in our efforts at doing that. So how do you put what you've learned into action and give back to your community in a meaningful way? And this is what Hobie's Active Leadership Cycle can really help. So putting leadership into action is a key component of Hobie's active leadership cycle, which is very similar to Kolb's experiential learning model. The cycle shows us that leadership is a continual process of learning, acting, reflecting, and innovating. To make a real difference in our communities and create social change, each step of the process must be completed in sequence. It's a cycle that always comes back to learning, or in Five Sigma Pi's language, scholarship. As leaders and Phi Sigma Pi members, you understand and value lifelong learning and development. And each one of the cycle steps corresponds with an ideal of Phi Sigma Pi because our organizations are very well aligned. So learn is scholarship, act is leadership, reflect is fellowship, and innovate is to further advance social service. So just as Phi Sigma Pi's tri tripod provides direction for the organization, the programming, and the actions of members, so does Hobie's active leadership cycle for our organization. So it's a lifelong process as we continue to grow and develop as people and as leaders. We want to continue to keep learning and developing our ideas into actions and learning from those actions. Today we're going to show you how to use the active leadership cycle in your chapter create, to create meaningful and impactful opportunities for social service. Now the first step in the process is to get educated. So once you've identified a need in your community, you'll need to discover the who, what, and why. So most of you didn't have problems identifying a need, which is great. But then it's important to ask the next questions which are, what's the cause behind this need or issue? Why is it important? What steps have to be taken or are currently being taken to address this? Who's working on the issue? Is there someone that you can talk to or, or an organization that you can talk to to find out more? And what resources are available to you? So now we want to go ahead and use the chat box. 
and ask the question, what are some ways that your chapter could implement the learn step in your service projects? So I want you to take a moment and put your answer into the chat box. So again, what are some ways that your chapter could implement the learn step into your service projects with your chapter? So one that we just got was have an expert on that issue or cause come in and speak to the chapter. Yeah, that's a really excellent one. Um, so if you can uh, find, uh, you know, someone who knows a lot about the issue or an organization that knows a lot about the issue and invite them to come speak at a chapter meeting, they're usually more than willing to do that. Another one is host a scholarship event to educate members. Yeah, that's a great one as well. Um, so as part of uh, the learning and scholarship, you can have your service uh, committee and your scholarship committee work together um, with the scholarship committee doing the education portion and your service uh, committee working to conduct the service project. Are there any other answers? Yep. You could visit community organizations so you could attend one of their meetings. Ah, yes. A field trip is always fun uh, to get out into the community and see uh, the organizations that uh, potentially need some help. You could do research. Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, say it again. Do research on the issue for the chapter. Yes. Um, so, as my kids would say, Google knows everything, which isn't completely true, but. Um, doing, uh, doing some research online or through your library is an excellent place to start as well. And were there any other responses? Uh, learn more about the organization so that you can figure out their problems. Yeah, that's a great one. So if you know of a local organization that you're interested in partnering with, um, one of the first places to go is to actually their website to educate yourself about them and then follow up with a follow up call uh, to see if you can come for a, a visit or to have somebody speak. Those are all really great answers. Do we have any others? Well, that seems about to be the gist. Okay. okay. All right. Well, those were all excellent answers. Um, so thank you very much for putting those into the chat box. So um, those are some great ways to really get educated on the issue. Um, so once you're educated on the issue, then it's time to figure out to, um, how you can act. And so you want to talk about how your chapter is going to be part of the solution to the problem. So how can you help address the issue? What are you hoping to accomplish? And what's required for you to successfully complete a project or initiative to address the issue? And what's your goal of the project? So no matter how important the, the learning portion, the reflection and innovation steps are, the, meaning, uh, the meaningful action is critical to be successful. So the bottom line for success is action that makes everyone involved feel that a measurable, even if it's a small, difference was made. So before the project, it is important to inform, train, and motivate your members. And so preparation for leadership for service experiences increases the likelihood that there will be positive outcomes for both the members, the chapter, and the campus and community. So providing information about the issue, like we said during the learn phase, or having a cooperating organization or an expert come visit the chapter prior to the project is a really great way to get chapter members involved in the beginning stages. Also, make sure that you communicate logistics for the project, like the time commitment, transportation, schedule, what to wear, and any safety procedures. So people really like to be prepared and know what's going on. Discuss the goals of the project and what the chapter needs to accomplish. Allow members to have the opportunity to express their feelings before the project, um, their expectations, their assumptions, and their concerns. So one way to get more people involved um, is to address any concerns or hesitancies that they might have about participating in the project and get those taken care of. When the chapter members are involved throughout the whole project, they will be more motivated to participate. So right from the very beginning. And passion and purpose make an experience meaningful. So think about it. You and your fellow chapter members are improving people's lives and creating a better, stronger community. You can be a part of making a larger impact. 
after taking action, we want to spend some time analyzing our actions and outcomes of those actions. So reflection is an essential component that distinguishes leadership for service and experiential learning from traditional volunteer traditional volunteerism or community service. So reflection provides a structured opportunity for you in the chapter to consider the effect of the service provided and better understand your role in the larger community. Reflection also makes a connection between the service you have provided and the broader social issues that are impacting your campus or community. It's also a time for personal growth when you can look within by processing the knowledge and skills you acquired through service. Reflection adds meaning and depth to any service project. Those who engage in reflection are more likely to continue with service because they're better able to recognize the positive personal and societal aspects of the activity. And it's important to do this together as a chapter. So through reflection, you should answer the questions like, how did the project address the needs presented? What did you accomplish and what did you learn? What have we learned that we can take back to our chapter in leadership positions? What were your initial expectations? And did those expectations change? And if so, how and why? Why did you conduct the project? What difference did it make? And how did you feel while doing the project? How does your understanding of the community issue change as a result of your participation in the project? And is there a similar need in your community? It's important that reflection happens either directly following the project or very soon thereafter while um, it's still fresh in everyone's memory. Additionally, the active leadership cycle and leadership for service uh, will help strengthen the bonds between members. So when everyone is working together to achieve a common cause to create social change, a relationship is created. So our final step is to innovate. To figure out what are the next steps. To innovate means to use what was learned to develop a better solution for the next time. How can we continue to commit ourselves to social service? And what are new methods, ideas, or projects that can be introduced? So at this stage, you want to think of the questions. What changes are you going to make to make it more effective next time? Are you going to continue your actions? How can this issue or need be addressed further? And what is your role in the issue? Do you, did you discover anything new about yourself or what you might want to do to continue to address the issue? And remember that it's a cycle. So after innovation, it goes right back to learning more. So going through the process, we learn more about the issue, the cause, the chapter, and ourselves. As leaders, we continue to grow and develop from acting upon what we have learned and continuous improvement. So let's put the active leadership cycle into practice by going through a scenario for your chapter. And at the end, we're going to ask you to um, put some information into the chat box again. So here's the scenario. Your chapter is interested in learning more about the local park close to campus and why it always seems to be littered. It's a nice park with a playground, but every time chapter members walk by it, they notice litter. From initial research, we find out that approximately 500 households use the park for children to play, adults to walk dogs, and in general for people to enjoy the outdoors. You contact the local community center to learn more and find out that the municipal maintenance budget for the park has been cut in recent years, contributing to a lack of resources for regular park cleanups and maintenance. Your service chair calls the municipal building to inquire about the chapter volunteering to do a park cleanup. And the service and scholarship committees co-plan a morning to do a park cleanup and invite the park director to speak. The director who shares how the park is lacking <coughs> the director shares how the park is lacking trash cans and a maintenance shed for tools, which is exacerbating the littering problem. Chapter members decide that they would like to schedule and conduct a park cleanup for an upcoming Saturday morning. And prior to the event, the service committee sends out the schedule, what to bring, and appropriate attire for the event. That day, the park director shows the members what needs to be completed. For volunteering, you discover that the park doesn't have enough benches, as they notice many parents standing and talking while their children play on the playground. 
So those would have been the word and act phases that have been completed. So what I'd like to do now is step three, which is reflect, and step four, innovate together using the chat box. So the first question is, what are some ways the chapter can reflect upon the experience, experience and what did they learn? So take a minute to consider and put your answer in the chat box. Again, the question is, what are some ways the chapter can reflect upon the service experience and what did they learn? Go ahead and put your answer into the chat box. So we got one that says host a forum to discuss the experience and how it how it met and differed from expectations. Oh, that's a great one. So hosting a forum or get together with your chapter chapter to um, kind of debrief the project, right? Like what people expected and then what actually happened. Um, and this is something that you can do in your fellowship or social time. Um, snacks are always good uh, for uh, people to have a, a discussion such as this. That was a great one. Any others? Um, the chapter can come back at a different time for at least a certain amount of members to take pictures and ask people that regularly attend the park what they think about the difference. Right, so that's um, a good one. You could ask for feedback, right? So you could be asking feedback from people who use the park or um, from the community center or the uh, municipality uh, for feedback on your work. I think um, that's really great. Um, and you can, uh, pictures are great, um, before and after pictures uh, especially. Um, so if you do a before picture before your project and then an after picture, um, that can be a useful tool for reflection as well. Do we have any other answers? Yes. The chapter has an opportunity to create a partnership with the park to help fulfill the needs. Ah, that is excellent. Um, and actually, that's getting into our next step, which is innovate. Um, <clears throat> but yes, there might be an opportunity for your chapter to create a partnership with, with the park, um, you know, maybe on an annual basis or semi-annually or even quarterly basis to help support the park and uh, what it is that uh, they need. Do we have anything else on reflection steps or should we move on to innovate? Um, one more. Uh, okay. They successfully conducted a service project. They learned there is much more they could do to address larger problems and perhaps make a regular service project out of their local park. Right. Okay. So that's great. That's also a great segue into Innovate. So let's talk about, um, let's move on and talk to about the Innovate step. Um, so what are some ways that the chapter can um, use what they've learned to develop a solution? What are the next steps and what should they do now? And so we've already had um, a couple questions or a couple answers to that, which is you might want to uh, develop a partnership with the park um, to help support it on an ongoing basis and work out a schedule with them and figure it out, out what other things they need in addition to a park cleanup. Um, so I really uh, like that answer. Um, so take a minute to consider what other things based on the scenario the park might need and how you could approach them, and go ahead and put that in the chat box. We have one that says, hold a fundraiser inside the park to get supplies, extensions, and maintenance. The people attending the park would be very likely to help make the park better. Right. That's a really excellent one, right? So um, we talked about in the scenario they could use some more benches. Um, they could use um, maybe some trash cans and supplies. So yeah, you could host a community event or fundraiser in the park um, to raise money to support the park and involve the community. Um, I think that's an excellent idea, and I think you're right. I think people who use the park regularly would probably come out to support it. Um, so that's a great idea. What else do people have? 
create signs to hang around the park that promote taking pride in the park and keeping it clean? Oh, excellent, right? So um, posting some uh, signs reminding people not to litter and to use trash receptacles um, and to keep it clean, uh, especially because children play there. Yes, I like that. What else? And one more is lobby the local government to restore the park maintenance budget. Ah, that's an excellent one. Um, yes, so you could choose to get involved um, in local government and uh, lobby the local government to restore the park maintenance budget uh, because that seems to be, um, you know, one of the causes of the issue. Were there any other responses? No, that seems to be it. Okay. All right, so let me um, give you some other ideas based on the scenario um, that your chapter could also do. Um, so based on the scenario, um, seems that the park needs to have some trash cans installed. So your chapter could find a donor for that or raise money to install trash cans. Um, you could um, get trash cans donated from a local organization or, or a store and then install them. Um, it was also mentioned that they need a shed for tools. So your chapter could build a shed or partner with another group on or off campus to build a shed, um, find a sponsor um, to donate a shed or raise money to buy a shed, and same thing with benches. Um, and somebody already mentioned hosting the community event, which is a great way to get the whole community involved. Um, so thank you for thinking uh, through those steps. Your answers were uh, really great. Um, and now I'd like to turn it over um, to Sarah, who's going to talk uh, uh, more about the active leadership cycle and applying it. Great. Thanks, Vicki. So now let's take um, a little bit to figure out how we can apply the cycle to your own chapter. So does anyone have a project in mind that we could use as an example um, as we walk through the process? So. Um, if you have any ideas of different causes or issues that we could um, walk the cycle through, if you can enter those into the chat box. Great. We'll just take the first one here then, Sarah. And it's the need is to find fun, safe events for elementary school students to do in the summer. Okay, great. So definitely, um, you know, as um, most colleges and universities have, you know, they definitely stand out within the community and have their local town and their local schools to get involved with. So um, one of the great ways that we can give back and use as a way to educate and inform and be engaged with the local community is by working with school students. So, uh, so what are some ways that we can, um, our chapters and members can get involved with local school students and host events that are safe and fun for them. So if you can enter those into the chat box of um, what are some things we would need to learn in order to start working with local school students in our communities. We have one that says their needs and what they look forward to. Okay. We could talk to Penn schools. Often schools can really use tutors for students who are falling behind. Legal requirements for programs involving students and children. What times and how frequently we can visit as an outside organization. Learn about local after school programs. Find spaces available like parks or the school itself to host the events. What events are already occurring and what time could we need the help? Got it. Great. Well, definitely, those all hit the, you know, nail on the head there. So definitely, um, we want to figure out first the legality um, and making sure there's, you know, if we want to get involved as a chapter with schools um, directly, they often require. I think legally um, background checks so just making sure you reach out to the schools um, and express that you know the chapter wants to be there to support their students and providing different programming and opportunities for them and making sure you're going through the proper channels so that's a great step 
Um, I also like to, you know, we're reaching out to the principals. Um, often the guidance counselors are a great uh, bridge to uh, make a connection with because they are able to explain what programs already exist for their students that they're offering uh, within the school, but then also within the community and figuring out what ways your chapter can fulfill a gap that might be existing. Um, but it's also a great way to get the students involved with the campus, with the university, uh, students on that campus or university. So it's a great way to, again, build those connections that they're able to go out into the community. So sometimes, you know, they're not just going to school and coming home, but there's a way that they can get involved with organizations or different clubs, sports, um, interests that they may want to do, especially like over the summer, since summer is approaching. So uh, going into the ACT phase, so let's use the example of um, providing ideas that students can get involved with over the summer. So we know that we're heading into them hopefully trying to be outside and do different clubs and outdoor activities. So what are some ways that we as a chapter can create opportunities for especially maybe elementary school students to get involved with over the summer? You can enter those into the chat box. Somebody said field days. Oh, that's a great idea. Definitely getting them outside and getting them involved. I think, you know, if you have members that could organize like a field day for the local kids, either like on a weeknight or a weekend, and members can teach the students the different uh, games. So whether that be, you know, doing a race or doing tug of war or, you know, different activities like ring toss, just things that get them outside and get them active. Um, and then you could have members kind of at booths or stations to to do that, and it's a great way to get the kids out and their parents and make connections. Some other ones are coaches sports team, taking a nature tour, hiking, helping with the local summer camps, taking them to different places like maybe the zoo, um, take them to a playground that probably had the baseball field with the pavilions. We could research and combine a list of different camps and programs to give the students so they have information all in one place. They could, uh, members can facilitate skills like teamwork and turn and take turns doing those games. Okay. Yeah, I really like all those ideas because there's a great way that you can even like combine them. So, um, like I heard a lot of different like outdoor activities like hiking and then sports and different uh, clubs and camps that they can go to that you can educate them on. So uh, maybe an idea that you could work with either as a chapter or get other organizations involved with as well is, you know, kind of host like a, a job fair, but for for kids. So, you know, promote saying, you know, we're going to host a, a summer camp fair or a summer fair and have, you know, it at the local park and you can have different organizations have tables and be represented. So you know, the local sports summer camp can have a table promoting their summer camp, or you can have a station on, you know, first aid, and, you know, if you're outside, what, you know, sort of things do you want to do to protect yourself, like the importance of wearing sunscreen and sunglasses and wearing um, bug spray. You could also have another station on, you know, pool safety. Uh, you could have a station on, you know, what information the library has for over the summer. So think of that as kind of like a way to get everyone out to that local park and you can have activities and have different organizations in the community as well as other organizations on campus represented and then the kids and their parents and their families can come around and literally spend a whole day just seeing you know what the kids can get involved with over the summer so that's a great way to just not only you know provide a need in the community and promote different organizations in your area but then also you know provide um, our members the opportunity to get involved with you know, maybe something they're really passionate like if they're if you have a member who's really involved with a the sport they can hold a little sports workshop or you know someone who really likes crafting they can do a craft table or offer face painting or areas to you know do little takeaways and have bags and snacks and food so it's a really great way to get everybody involved with something that they're passionate about oh well, great well that was Awesome. I'm going to actually take it back to Vicki and uh, we'll talk about this a little bit more.
<clears throat> Thank you so much. So once your um, project is, uh, oh, okay, we'll run through this, which is um, Hobie's Community Service Project Planning Guide. Um, and so this is a, and you have a handout associated with this um, as well um, on your resource center. But this is a really good guide to walk you through all the steps in planning a service project. Um, we're going to hit the highlights here, and there's uh, more information in the handout. So it's really important to start with the issue or problem to be addressed. So what is it that you're trying uh, to solve, or what issue is it that you're trying to help with? So you want to consider a problem or, or issue, and you want to consider what the root causes of that problem are. So why does the problem exist, and can you address the root cause, or can you only address the symptoms? And will addressing the symptoms help, or will it actually hurt? Because sometimes it can hurt. So those are um, really good questions to answer. And um, if you're not sure, that's where um, the learning part comes in, uh, in educating yourself, um, so that you know you're choosing an appropriate project. Second thing you want to consider is who's the population that you're going to be serving. So you want to consider who is going to benefit from your project and what type of service would benefit that particular group. Um, we've got several examples of group, groups here, but this is not an uh, uh, exclusive list. There can be more, but here's some common ones. Are the homeless or the hungry in your community, senior citizens, school students, and we just talked about an example related to school students, uh, people with special needs, uh, citizens and, and uh, government, and um, neighborhood and the environment. Um, so think about the park example that we gave uh, as a really good example of neighborhood and environment. Um, and then you want to consider the type of project that you think you want to do or the type of project that's needed by the organization that you're working with. So it could be a face-to-face -face project, a hands-on project, or a collection drive are some examples of that. So when you're planning, and I would encourage you to actually um, you know, write all of these things down. Um, and again, it's in your, uh, your handout to follow all of the steps. But you want to complete a planning guide. And the guide has two parts. We're going to talk about both parts. One is planning, and the other is implementation and evaluation. So your response to the planning questions in the first part will become the guide for you to follow when you actually implement the project. You want to involve everyone on the planning team in this process. And again, that's what creates involvement, is involving people in the process. Also generates more ideas and strengthens the commitment to the project so that it becomes the team's project or the chapter's project, not just um, the service committee's project or the service chair's project. So you want to take your ideas um, to the action planning space. So we'll start with your primary purpose. So why is it that you're doing the project? Um, does the project address a need in the community? You actually want to write a statement that describes the overall reason for the project, and it can literally be one sentence. Then you want to figure out your goals. What is it that's to be accomplished? What are your goals for the project? Um, and you want to list three to five goals, and you want them to be specific and measurable. And you want to answer the questions, what, for, who, how many, and when, basically. So if you're familiar with SMART goals, you want to make a SMART goal for your project. And again, it, can, it doesn't have to be long. It can be a sentence or two. Then it's figuring out the human resources or the committee assignments, um, what people and how many are needed to meet the goals, and you want to list the individuals, their assignments, and their duties for both the planning and the implementation. You want to consider your resources, so what materials, supplies, or community resources will you need. And you want to specify the items or services to be provided, including the source, quantity, and whether it has to be purchased or donated, or whether you have to raise funds for it. So you need to figure out all of the things that you need to pull it off. And then consider challenges. What problems or situations do you anticipate um, that you might need to overcome to successfully conduct the project? And you want to list possible solutions next to problems that you've identified. So for example, if you have a project and you need approval from somebody to do it, 
um, getting through that approval process could be something that could be a challenge that you might want to consider. Next one is listing your specific action steps and your timeline with specific dates that each action should be completed by. Um, you can work forwards or backwards. So some people like to work backwards from the planned date of the project and other people like to work forwards from uh, their starting point now. And then the last portion is to prepare a detailed budget for any anticipated income or expenses if that's relevant to your project. So you want to include donated goods, contributions, sales, if you're going to be selling anything as income. And then you want to include your donated um, items in the expenses category. And then list any expenses that you might have, anything that you need to purchase or supplies that you need to get. So you want to reflect the true cost of running the project. And it may be a very small cost, but there's probably something associated with it. So then you'll actually conduct your project. And then we move into the reflection and innovation stage, or the implementation and evaluation. So this is the part where you're going to record what actually happened with the project. Um, you're going to refer to part one, your planning. And then you're going to record what you actually did, what actually happened, including any changes that you may have made along the way. And you're also going to determine whether you met your goals or not. Um, or maybe you've exceeded your goal. Or maybe you didn't quite hit your goal, but you made really good progress and it was a positive effort. So this will be useful if you want to explain the, orga the organization of the project to someone else, say the next service chair taking over, or to use it as a guide the next time you undertake the project, especially if it's something you're going to be doing annually, for example. So you, you want to look at your results and outcomes and, and write down what the specific results were for each of the goals that you established in the beginning. You want to include whether your goal was changed along the way from the original plan, or if uh, you added a goal, or if you made your goal smaller because you ran into some challenges. And then, how did you feel as a result of the project? That's the reflection portion. And how did it go? You want to record by date the specific planning steps and the actions that were actually taken. So kind of check off you know, what you did on your action plan and did it go as planned. And then on revisions, you want to record any achievements, changes or adjustments that became necessary during the process and describe how any anticipated or unanticipated problems were handled because it might be that they arise again the next time or maybe you can figure out a way to avoid them. You also want to make sure that you record the specific roles and types of services which people provided for the project and also any contacts of people at local organizations that you would want to be in touch with again. And then for resource allocation, you want to make sure you had a budget in the beginning and resources that you thought you were going to need, but again, what actually happened. You want to record what your actual income was and uh, what you received, and then you also want to record your specific expenses and their specific amounts. You want to include if you received any donated goods that maybe uh, you didn't have to buy or supplies that you didn't have to purchase and where you received them from. And then you also want to record if there were any specific materials for your project. Did you have to do a marketing flyer, for example, or did you have to send a letter to somebody? Maybe there was a brochure. Uh, but you do want to make sure that you collect those items and keep them for the next time around. So example materials might include photos, we talked about before and after photos, brochures, flyers, programs, samples of letters, newspaper article, maybe if you got some nice press for what it was you were doing. And then once you finish the reflection, you need to look at your innovation step, which is your changes for next time. So what changes would you recommend for the future? What would you do differently next time and why and how? And then that leads right back into the learning phase again. So for the last portion of our uh, Lunch and Learn today, I want to talk a little bit about Hobie's Advanced Leadership Academy. Um, and how you can get involved with that. 
So Hobie's Advanced Leadership Academy is specifically designed for high school juniors and seniors. And the program is in three parts. It contains leadership theory, personal leadership development, and project management training. And all of the students go through the academy and create a project action plan for a service project or social entrepreneurship project of their choosing that they would like to uh, implement within one year following the ALA. Um, so they leave the ALA with a fully fleshed out action plan and then they receive project support uh, for the next year from their project coach. They earn college credit for completion of the ALA and additional college credit for completion and documentation of their project. This year, the Advanced Leadership Academy is going to be July 6th through the 11th at Loyola University, Chicago, and we are still in need of a few college age of volunteers. So if you'd like to volunteer, uh, you can go to the link there that is uh, displayed on your screen and complete a volunteer application. Um, we are in need specifically of associate project coaches, um, which are college age, age students. So you can look up that description and see if it fits you and if you're interested. Hobie takes care of all of your expenses once you're on site at Loyola University in Chicago, but you are responsible for getting yourself there at home. Um, you can also recruit or sponsor students to the academy. So every year we receive um, applications uh, from low-income uh, students that need scholarship assistance. Um, and so if your chapter is interested in raising some money to provide scholarship assistance for a deserving student to attend the Advanced Leadership Academy, that would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you know a high school junior or senior, and so they're a junior or senior now, and by this summer they would be a rising senior or rising college freshman um, who would benefit from attending the Advanced Leadership Academy, registration is open, and you can go to that link there under Recruit where they learn more and then they can register directly. So students can register directly online, and registration is open until June 15th. So this is a great program if you have younger siblings or cousins or friends that you might want to uh, mention this to. Um, highly recommend it. The college credit that they earn is transferable college credit from George Mason University in Virginia, and it does transfer to most colleges and universities across the United States. You can also donate um, to the Academy. So if there's not a specific student you want to sponsor, you can donate in general to the scholarship fund, or you can ask us if we um, have a gifted kind wish list, which we do. Um, and if you'd like to hold a collection drive, we would be happy to provide you with that wish list. Also want to remind you um, that you have uh, on your phisigmapi.org slash resources website, there's a Hobie folder uh, where there's all sorts of resources related to Hobie. And uh, don't forget about the blog at phisigmapi.wordpress.com where you can also learn uh, more information about Hobie and how your chapter can get involved. And if you want to learn more, um, the college textbook that we use for the Advanced Leadership Academy is called Leadership for a Better World. It's on its second edition now, and we're going to be, uh, which just came out in November. We're going to be using the second edition for the leadership for the Advanced Leadership Academy this year. Um, you can purchase this on Amazon.com if you're interested in learning more. And I will say it's not a difficult read. It's a, it's a pretty good read, um, and it doesn't really read like a textbook. So uh, if you're interested in learning more, I highly recommend this book. Great. So before we close, if anybody has any questions uh, for Sarah or for Vicki, you can type it in the chat box and I can ask it. So we can wait a couple of minutes to see if we have any questions. One question we got was, how much does it cost to sponsor a, somebody to the ALA? Ah, okay. So the Advanced Leadership Academy is $1,250. That includes 
uh, does not include transportation to and from Chicago, but it includes everything else. So it includes uh, lodging and um, meals, all the training materials, the book, um, a shirt, and uh, the electronic tools and everything that we use. Um, so it includes everything once on site. There are, you don't have to, um, if you want to sponsor a full uh, scholarship, it's $12.50, but you can also do partials. So sometimes we have students that just need a little bit of an extra boost. They can come up with some of the money, but not quite all of it. Um, so really any amount helps. Um, it's not unusual for us to just get requests uh, for partial scholarships. Um, and again, uh, that helps a lot. So. It's really up to you and your chapter. It's, it's, if you want to do a full student, it's twelve fifty. But just know that you know two or three or four hundred dollars also really helps out quite a bit. Okay. Another question is, what is the best way to get involved with Hobie as a chapter? Oh my goodness, there's so many ways to get involved with Hobie as a chapter. Um, Sarah, do you want to take that one? Sure. Um, so one of the ways I would recommend uh, doing uh, right off the bat is see if this summer if you're able to volunteer for a leadership seminar. Um, I think some of the sites still have their applications open or still have needs. Uh, but even if there's a couple of you that are able to volunteer either locally um, in your state where your college is or if you're from a different state, but um, definitely seeing Hobie in action. Um, seeing the program, seeing the change that the ambassadors go through is, I think, what really makes the whole Hobie um, partnership really concrete. Because, again, you get to really see it. Um, I would also encourage maybe for the fall to partner with Hobie to plan like an alumni day of service. So um, you can contact your local Hobie affiliate and um, their alumni advisor and see if uh, your chapter and the local Hobie site can co-plan a day of service. So whether they have um, their alumni come to your local college community and together the chapter members and the Hobie alumni can find a way to get involved within the community uh, giving back. Um, I think it's a great way because then you can meet Hobie alumni, um, they can talk about their Hobie experience and what they've been doing. Um, and then you can also look at planning a clue uh, which we did a lunch and learn webinar on. Uh, but again, you know, now would be a great time to start having those conversations with your local home sites. Um, that way, next year when you come back, you can plan one either for the fall or for next spring. Um, and a clue would be a one day workshop for a high school freshman. And that is an opportunity that your chapter can have either like the service committee co-plan that or uh, create like a standing committee, a temporary committee that is in charge of planning the clue. So you would have to invite local high school students to attend. Um, you would plan the program, which includes personal leadership activities, uh, keynote speakers, um, a leadership for service panel, um, something along those lines. But it's basically six hours of programming and hope you provide you with the tools needed to plan that. Um, and I know you would love to have more clues. So that would definitely be a cool way that the school chapter can get involved. Um, but definitely just making sure you're reaching out and forming those partnerships. Um, but always keep in mind that when you're transitioning or Hobie might be transitioning to make sure that those relationships continue. Also, one other uh, thing I would say for this spring, if you're interested in volunteering in May or June, I know a lot of uh, Hobie sites are still looking for uh, facilitators for their leadership seminar or um, associate or junior facilitators for their leadership seminar. So as a facilitator, you need to be age 21 or over. And um, you actually guide a group of high school sophomores, usually 8 to 10 students, uh, through the weekend. And then if you're a junior or associate facilitator, that's uh, usually college students under the age of 21 um, who are matched up with a uh, facilitator over age 21 as a team uh, with that uh, small group of students. 
Um, it's a really excellent way to get introduced to Hobie, um, to learn uh, more about what we do, and also to have fun and really um, impact the lives of those students. So if you're interested in doing that, you just go to Hobie.org, and on the top, click on uh, Volunteer, and then Volunteer for Leadership Seminar. And there's a quick five-minute online application for that, and someone will get in touch with you. Well, if you have any other questions, you can uh, email hobie at phisigmapi.org. So thank you, Vicki and Sarah, for discussing how to plan a service project with us today. You will be able to watch and share this webinar on our YouTube page at youtube.com backslash phisigmapi. Thank you again for participating today, and congratulations on earning eight Leadership in Action points. Remember, your goal is to reach 75 points to earn your Leadership in Action certification. And that does it for today's Leadership in Action Lunch and Learn webinar. Lead on.